Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the U.S. Naval War College graduation ceremony. I'm Captain Cindy Dieterle, the Dean of Students, and will be serving as the MC for today's ceremony. You are welcome to take pictures at any time. We have official photographers taking pictures today, and you will find those photos posted on our Flickr site for you to download. At this time, as a courtesy, please put your cell phones on silent or vibrate. Please remain seated for the student procession. Please rise and remain standing for the arrival of the official party, national anthem, and the invocation. The national anthem will be sung by musician second class Holden Moyer from the Navy Band Northeast. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled 
can her yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Commander Richard Smothers, Command Chaplain, Naval Station Newport, will deliver the invocation. Let us pray. Everyone to whom much was given, of them much will be required. And from them to whom they entrusted much, they will demand the more. Lord, as these graduates complete this season of learning, we thank you for each of them. Their pursuit of mastery in the profession of arms has led them through a challenging season of education aboard the Naval War College. We pray for each graduate that mission success with enduring honor will be their legacy. May they and their loved ones experience great encouragement because of their time aboard. We give thanks today for the Naval War College team, staff, researchers, instructors, and students. May their tireless efforts bear much fruit for just and noble service in the years to come. Lord, now please bless those who will speak in this hour. May their words challenge and empower us to be men and women of integrity, zeal, honor, and fidelity personally and professionally. We ask these blessings humbly and gratefully in your mighty name. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. It gives me great pleasure to introduce the members of our official party. Professor Sean Hensler, Deputy Dean, College of Maritime Operational Warfare. Dr. Dean D Peter Dutton, Interim Dean, Center for Naval Warfare Studies. Rear Admiral Retired, Margaret Klein, Dean, College of Leadership and Ethics. Professor Walt Wildeman, Dean, College of Distance Education. Professor Thomas Mangold, Dean, International Programs and Maritime Security Cooperation. Dr. Tim Schultz, Associate Dean of Academics. Dr. Jay Hickey, Interim Provost, United States Naval War College. Captain Patrick Kulikowski, Professor, Strategic and Operational Research Department. And Rear Admiral Shoshana S. Chatfield, the 57th President of the United States Naval War College. Several years ago, we began a tradition at the U U.S. Naval War College of allowing the graduating student body to nominate their guest speaker from amongst all the talented professionals at the college. I would like to ask graduating student Commander Matthew Heffinger to introduce your faculty guest speaker. Matt. Admiral, faculty and staff, guests, fellow graduates. It's my privilege to introduce Captain Patrick Kulikowski, United States Navy, as a guest speaker for our graduation. Captain K is a career service warfare officer with a subspecialty in nuclear propulsion. He has served on three cruisers and two carriers, and he commanded the USS Carr. In addition to a number of other staff assignments, he was the officer in charge of the Atlantic Surface Nuclear Propulsion Mobile Training Team, maintaining the safety of our nuclear fleet, as well as the NORAD Maritime Warning Chief responsible for early warning to both Canada and the United States of any maritime threats to North America. Here at the Naval War College, Captain K is the Deputy Director of the Russian Maritime Studies Institute and the Director of the Holloway Advanced uh, Research Program, which is a Russia-focused war game. As I'm sure everyone has seen in the news lately, this has become much more topical than it was when we started classes. The Naval War College is an academic institution, but a unique one that is designed to train military leaders at the graduate level. Operationalizing academic concepts and putting them into practice can be far more complicated than it sometimes seems in the classroom, but that's why we're here. We're expected to apply Sun Tzu and Klaus Switch to the real world, navigate the interagency process, and drive the planning of military operations. Captain K is the one that operationalized the Holloway War Game for us, making it more than just an academic exercise. His example in translating numbers and data into something real sets an example for how we can use our education in the future. Those of us that had the opportunity to learn from him are very grateful for it. Captain K, thank you for speaking today. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Captain Kulikowski. So Matt, thanks for that introduction. It was more than I deserve. Admiral Chatfield, distinguished guests, colleagues, graduates, and families, thank you for this opportunity to talk to the student body today. All right, so I didn't plan on talking about it, but it was a rough day for me yesterday. We all know bad things come in three. So there is potential for bad things to happen today. So if you have cameras, get them ready. I could topple off the stage. So it began yesterday when I Charlie Browned in the uh, parking lot, ended up on my back, couldn't breathe for a few minutes. That was exciting. Last night, my pit bull at seven o'clock at night decided to run off on me. So two hours later, I was in shorts and a sweatshirt. Two hours later, I got him back. So those are my two bad things. And if you didn't know, it was pretty cold last night. All right, so I don't know how you got me as your guest speaker. Only the Dean of Students truly knows the process that went on behind the scenes. But, you know, I just want to note this command is filled with lots of talented people. Many who are more, way more eloquent than me, more thoughtful, and uh, better at communicating their thoughts. But somehow you got me today. So I'm not going to attempt to hide it. I'm not the most prolific speaker, but I got a few things for you I think you can take away as you depart. Go over the bridges. Just want to relate to with the dean of students what happened when I was chosen. So it was like a sting operation. I was in my office, and out of nowhere come students and the dean of students, and they just all started moving towards me. And do I know what a sting operation is like? Yes, I have actually been in the sting operation in 1993. If you'd like to talk about it afterwards, I'll give you that story. So she really thought I was going to try to back out of this. But quite frankly, if the students want me to speak and they were touched by me in some way, then I am here to speak and carry out my duty. And then after I graciously accepted, I got my wallets and key back. So that helped too. All right. So I have an overwhelming need for transparency, as my students know, uh, as my wife knows and regrets many times as I tell lots of things that she wishes I wouldn't. But I will tell you, this is my first graduation ceremony since 1988. And I don't remember it. I know there's pictures of me at my high school graduation in 1988. So I definitely was there. What was said, I am not sure. So I was behind the eight ball about what the guest speaker was supposed to talk about. So lacking experiences watching guest speakers over the year, I went to my go-to place, YouTube. So I keyed up the, uh, the first video that came up. And I felt like it was a flashback to the Seinfeld Festivus episode. I got a problem with you people. And I decided that is probably not something I want to do today. Second one was a little touchy-feely. I'm not a very touchy-feely person, so that probably wasn't the way to go either. So I gave up on YouTube. Watched a couple more videos, but is it is, is what it is. So then I went to my Facebook community. So I got lots of friends out there, lots of previous people I've served with. I got enlisted people, chiefs in there. I got senior officers. I got mid-grade officers. And I reached out to them and told them what I would be doing today and said, hey, I need a little bit of help here. What should I talk about? And wow, I received dozens and dozens of comments, truly tremendous outpouring of responses, all just not appropriate for this venue. <laughs> so then I thought about it. I said, okay, if I'm sitting in the audience with you guys, as you, what would I want to hear about? So I sat down and thought it through. You know, things you need to think about as you go off to your operational assignments. I came, out, I came up with a list of five. So there's five things I'll hit on. Well, actually, there's four because my wife nixed one of my five. So we won't hear about that. I'm also not going to quote Mahan. I won't talk about any historic naval battles or the planning process. You probably got your fill of that for now. All right, so before I go on further, I want to address the most important people in the room, which is not the front of the room. It's the families in the back. You know, without you, we can't do this. You're essential. And families, I also mean friends. I don't know if it's a New England thing, but I have lots of aunts, uncles, and cousins who are related to me in no way at all. So you're also part of the family. So I'm sure you hear from your service member regularly how much you support them through good times and bad times. But if not, I'm here to thank you for what you do to support the armed forces when we're out there. You know, sometimes it's really challenging. You're fixated on what you're doing on 
the ship or the unit and the problem and you come home and you're still thinking about that and the family has to deal with that. And they do and they support you. Uh, sometimes when we're deployed and we're away and we can't be here to support the families as well. The most important thing I think the families do is to cut us down to size when we think we're up to here, right? We think we're all that. If that's never happened in your life before, at some point that'll happen where you think you're all that and you have all the answers and your family's there and your friends are there to tell you, come on, come back down to earth, be grounded. So the family members who were in Rhode Island with their service member, hope you guys got out to enjoy my portion of the country. I know COVID presented a lot of challenges, but there's a lot to do in this area. Hope you get back as well. All right, topic one, the value of any war college. So more about me. I did not attend the Naval War College. Although I had orders to the Naval War College, I got about three weeks out when Big Navy decided I had to go to the New Nuclear Propulsion Examining Board. So quickly I changed what I was going to do and headed to Norfolk instead of lovely Newport. Had many friends arrive here and try to figure out what happened to me along the way. I explained it all. So although I didn't go here, I'm pretty confident in my first thought. Although the education you receive here is very important, it's not the most important aspect of your time here. It's not what you learn in the core curriculum. It's not JMO. It's not national security decision-making, strategy and policy, leadership and the profession of arms. As someone who directs, who does an elective, I'm not here to tell you it's the electives either. So the most important real value here is everybody in the front and the conversation you guys have had together. You know, inner service stuff, having a SWO talk to an aviator and learn what they do. Having an Army guy talk to a Navy guy, learn what he does. And then if you have international partners as well, that's an opportunity where you should interact. So moving forward, your grade's not the important part of this. Your degree is not the important part. I think regardless of your grades and how you did here, you have failed if you fail to keep in communications with the rest of your classmates, at least a small cadre. Right. So keep in touch as you go forward. Fewer students, maybe even one or two faculty. And use these people as you go forward. So especially if you go out to command, there's going to be some tough days out there where you can't talk to anybody at your unit. You need to find somebody. You know, feel free to reach back to the people you spent time with here and get their advice. See what experiences they've had. Or do what sailors do the best. Complain and just let off some steam when you need to. So stay in contact. Topic two, knowledge and personal growth. So this shouldn't be shocking to hear, but you haven't learned everything you need to know from this college going forward. You're headed out to take charge and lead some very challenging situations, and you have to commit to continuous learning. You need to be able to think critically. You need to develop your own personal curriculum, in my opinion, to continue to excel. There's not going to be some structured course from you going forward that's going to teach you everything. So with that commitment to continuous learning, you need to be well-rounded. Yes, you need to continue to look at uh, military history, leadership strategy books, lectures, podcasts, but expose yourself to other things. Expose yourself to things that you don't necessarily agree with, different perspectives. As many viewpoints as you can get, the better. The more topics, the better. All right, you might have feel that, felt that you've achieved a higher plane of knowledge while you've been here and you're ready to go out and draft some grand strategy, maybe develop some O plans from scratch. Make sure that you go back to the basics too. You need to know the capability and limitations of your equipment, the forces you'll bring to the fight. And speaking with my ARP hat on, you need to take time to study your potential adversaries as well. You need to know their equipment. You need to know their weapons. You need to know the tactics. So strategy and big picture thinking is great, but you got to get into the weeds as well. So Halsey Alpha, Halsey Bravo, and Holloway were only able to take a very few amount of students in. I wish everybody could go through one of the ARPs and learn war gaming and get some insights like that, but you can't. So my challenge to those who have attended the ARPs, go forward with that knowledge, take that to your next unit, and spread the methods and the things we've taught you there. So I can only touch, I think we had 15 students this time. And if those 15 students go out and teach, you know, another 15, it just multiplies and multiplies. That's how we're going to get that job done. 
Topic three, it's not about you, right? So I've been through many leadership courses, many command courses, and every time somebody stands up and says, it's not about you, just remember, it's not about you. It's about your people, the mission. So I've sat, I counted it up. I did some brainstorming. I have 14 people I've sat through those classes with who have been fired along the way for doing inappropriate things. Like running aground is one thing, but there's other things you could do that you could prevent. So I want to take a different perspective on that. It's a little bit about you. And I think you need to realize it's a little bit about you. And you need to take time to think about your ego and ambitions. So when you get in some of those situations, you don't follow all those other people who have gone before you down the bad path. None of us here want to go down the bad path. I'm sure you're all thinking good thoughts now. But it happens. You need to take time, that, time to think about that and prevent it. You're all good people. Go out there and be good people. Topic four, the last topic. Everybody's favorite topic is the last topic. Entitled rules and regulations. So it's critical that you know rules and regulations. And there's a ton of them out to go adhere to. And everybody says, oh, that's enlightening. Well, I didn't know that. Thanks. So as a surface nuke, I'm in a career path that's known for following the rules, strictly following the rules. In fact, we have a whole instruction that tells you the word shall or should mean shall, right? But I'm going to tell you right now that sometimes you're going to need to break rules. So Patrick Twitchett has a quote I like. Rules are for the guidance of the wise and the obedience of fools. I think there's a big difference between knowing, knowingly breaking your rule and violating a rule you weren't aware of. So I violated rules when I was in command and other places, but I knew what the rule was and I knew why I was going to violate it. Sometimes you need to do that. Rules are sometimes capture a picture in time or certain circumstances that might not fit where you find yourself. So you need to use your expertise and your experience. And you also need to be prepared to stand up and say, yeah, I broke that rule and this is why I did it. And I'll accept the consequences, good or bad. And you guys have made it through most of my speech. So warfighters, congratulations on completing this rigorous curriculum at the Naval War College. Thank you for enduring my nasally voice and Northeastern accent. And best of all, luck to all of you as you continue to move forward in your careers and continue to do good things out there. And one more thing, for you, those of you driving south today, watch out for those stadies in Connecticut and New Jersey. Captain Kulikowski, on behalf of the students, staff, and faculty, I thank you for your comments and your ongoing contributions and service to our country. For each graduating class, one student is selected for recognition as the President's Honor Graduate. Recipients of this award are chosen based on their outstanding achievement across a spectrum of disciplines, including academic performance, participation in Naval War College activities, participation in civic and community activities, and promotion of armed government services in the public interest. Mr. George Lang, Ex Chief Executive Officer of the Naval War College Foundation, please join Rear Admiral Chatfield in presenting these awards. For the College of Naval Warfare, the Honor Graduate for the March 2022 graduating class is Colonel Brad Hipp, U.S. Marine Corps. Please come up on stage to receive your award. Colonel Hipp finished number one of 16. He was JMO and NSDM seminar leader, JMO capstone exercise team lead, NSDM final exercise team leader. He participated in the President's Cup axe throwing competition, the Navy War College Winter Ball, and the New Hampshire U.S. Marine Corps Birthday Ball. He was also an assistant coach for his son's soccer team. Along with a certificate, the Naval War College will be presenting him a Weems and Plath compass kindly gifted by the Naval War College Foundation.
For the College of Naval Command and Staff, the honor graduate for the March 2022 graduating class is Lieutenant Commander Ryan Pettifer, U.S. Navy. Please come up to the stage to receive your award. Lieutenant Commander Pettifer finished number one of 45. He was a TSDM seminar academic rep, providing feedback, information, and analysis, a vital element of ongoing dialogue and academic and operational decision-making at the Naval War College. Along with a certificate, the Naval War College will be presenting him a Weems and Plath compass, kindly gifted by the Naval War College Foundation. We will now give our honor graduates a few moments to address their fellow graduates and classmates. Good afternoon, Admiral Chatfield, esteemed faculty and staff, fellow students, families, and honored guests. I'm humbled and honored to, to receive this recognition. However, I didn't get here alone. Like most meaningful endeavors, success depends on having a robust support network and morale system to keep you motivated even when your motivation fails. So instead of giving my thoughts on leadership or the future, I just wanna thank a few people who've helped me along the way. First, amongst faculty, Dr. Nani Hall Singh and Dr. Gina Palmer, stand out amongst them. Nani Hall, you captured my interest. It gave me a new lifelong uh, career, uh, future career path and uh, interest in your uh, China Africa class. Gina, you managed to convince a skeptic and a devil's advocate of the importance of the nuanced approach to leadership. You also gave me skills and frameworks for continuous growth and self-assessment. Next, to my fellow classmates, I value your honest and frank debates, both in and out of seminar. I can honestly say I learned as much from you as I did from the coursework itself. And this goes doubly so for our international partners, as well as our interagency classmates. I didn't know what your, what your interests were prior to coming here, but I value that. And you've given me many things to think about from here moving forward. Finally, I'd like to thank my family for their support, patience, and encouragement. Your support and sacrifice enabled me to focus on the task at hand. During numerous hours spent reading, writing, and researching. Rebecca, finally, you've been my first and best editor. You've given me frank and honest advice and at times brutal, about when my arguments fail to make any semblance of sense. So today, you all have enabled my success and I appreciate that. And finally, I just wanna say thank you for the journey and I wish you all the best in the future. So last Thursday afternoon, our seminar presented our final project for an SDM, and I thought I was done with the Naval War College. Then the Nina students called me uh, on Saturday. I was skiing with my family in Vermont, gave me one more assignment, the opportunity to speak here at, uh, at graduation. So here we are, one more assignment, uh, so bear with me. I also really look forward to the feedback on this assignment, which will inevitably be the uh, NWC great job and corresponding grade of 88. <laughs> uh, good afternoon, Admiral Chatfield, distinguished faculty and uh, guests, colleagues, and most importantly, families. Uh, in all seriousness, it's an absolute honor to take the stage here in Spruce. Throughout our time, Spruance, sorry, throughout our time here, uh, over our 14 months, we've had the service chiefs, incredible panels, and many excellent lectures from the PhDs across the institution all of which st stimulated deep reflection and taught us a great deal. As off-cycle students, we most certainly have the best schedule. We showed up in the heart of COVID and had our warm-up trimester, SMP for the senior class and JMO for the junior class. Then like real college kids, we got a summer break. It was amazing. Like uh, many of you, I showed up looking for a break, 
from the high operational tempo of the fleet and the time off in the summer was just what our families needed. The virtual trimester was a brutal way to start and I'm thankful to the NWC leadership for uh, shouldering the risk to get us back on campus for our final two trimesters. Getting us back on campus was vital to the most significant advantage to attending the resident program here. That's the friendships and network we've built throughout our time. Through exposure to the diverse students from 56 nations, many US agencies and all specialties throughout the armed forces, we've gained worldwide and unique perspectives from the best of the best. These relationships will not maintain themselves. My charge to those of us graduating today is to take the time and energy to maintain those friendships. These bonds may be the advantage that allows our joint force partners and allies to win the fights of the future. Fellow graduates, we've accomplished quite a bit in the last year. We've read thousands of pages. Uh, we've read thousands of pages of challenging texts, written papers, and taken part in rigorous academic exchange. The challenging program most certainly developed and advanced our critical thinking preparing us for the complicated, complex, and wicked problems of the future. The current stability of the world order is in question. Authoritarian governments are on the rise with indications that democracy may be backsliding. If there's anything that we can take away from last week, it's that despotic leaders will attempt to reshape the world order, stepping on the weak to meet their objectives. I'm thankful for my time here to study and reflect on warfare and strategy of the past, and to consider warfare and strategy for the coming decades. As graduates of this fine institution, it's our job to ensure our country, its leaders, partners and allies, and the joint force are, compared, are prepared to compete on the world stage. Finally, when required, the officers in this room must be prepared to lead, to correction, must be uh, prepared to lead the joint force and fight and win across all domains. Fellow graduates, congratulations. The hard work has paid off. We made it. To the faculty and staff, thank you for your tireless support that helped all of us make it to graduation. We've learned an incredible amount from you. To our families, it's easy to ask for and justify family sacrifice when we're deployed, working late while leading, leading, uh, the operating, leading and operating in the fleet. It's much more difficult to ask for isolation, to read a book, or to write a paper. Thank you for your support and understanding over the last year. Finally, fellow graduates, good luck as you move on to your subsequent assignments. I hope our paths cross again soon. Super Fidelis. A Master of Arts degree in National Security and Strategic Studies or defense and strategic studies as appropriate will now be conferred to the graduates. Will the graduates please rise and remain in place? Rear Admiral Chatfield, please approach the podium. Admiral, I have the honor to present the March graduates of the United States Naval War College, candidates for the Master of Arts in National Security and Strategic Studies or Defense and Strategic Studies. They have been thoroughly examined and approved by the faculty. By the power vested in me by the Congress of the United States, the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff and the New England Commission of Higher Education, I confer upon you the appropriate degrees and diplomas from the United States Naval War College with all the honors, rights, and privileges pertaining thereto. It's the March 2022 graduates of the United States Naval War College. Thank you, Admiral. Graduates, please be seated. Beyond the requirements for graduation, certain individuals have distinguished themselves through academic excellence. For those in the top 5%, they are receiving a diploma with highest distinction. Those in the next 15% will receive a diploma with distinction. Graduates will now receive their diplomas. 
Graduates, please proceed to the stage as your name is read. Guests are welcome to come forward to take pictures. Please try to hold your applause until all names have been read. Rear Admiral Chatfield, Captain Kulikowski, Dr. Hickey, and Dr. Schultz, please rise. Presenting the graduating members of the College of Naval Warfare. Captain David Blouser, U.S. Navy. Colonel Donald Brayman, U.S. Army. Captain Andrew Cook, U.S. Navy. Commander Edward David, U.S. Navy. Commander Harry Evans, U.S. Navy. Commander Andrew Gurla, U.S. Navy. Colonel Brad Hipp, U.S. Marine Corps, with highest distinction. Lieutenant Colonel Douglas Keene, U.S. Army National Guard, with distinction. Commander Craig McLemore, U.S. Navy, with distinction. Captain Saad Todd Santella, U.S. Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey Schaefer, U.S. Army Reserve. Commander Richard Smith, U.S. Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Scott Steffen, U.S. Marine Corps with distinction. Commander Nicholas Walker, U.S. Navy. Lieutenant Colonel Stephen Walters, U.S. Army Reserve. Presenting the graduating members of the College of Naval Command and Staff. Lieutenant Commander David Botwin, U.S. Navy. Lieutenant Commander Shane Brenner, U.S. Navy. (laughs) 
Major Andrew Cayley, U.S. Army. Major Matthew Darnley, U.S. Army. Major Jason Decker, U.S. Army. Major Daryl Diltz, U.S. Army. Lieutenant Commander Mark Edson, U.S. Navy. Lieutenant Commander William Fenneman, U.S. Navy, with distinction. Lieutenant Commander Alexander Glass, U.S. Navy. Lieutenant Joshua Gray, U.S. Navy. Lieutenant Commander Mark Grissom, U.S. Navy, with distinction. Lieutenant Commander Donald Hampton, U.S. Navy. Lieutenant Matthew Harvey, U.S. Navy. Lieutenant Commander Timothy Henkin, U.S. Navy, with highest distinction. Commander Matthew Heffinger, U.S. Navy, with distinction. Lieutenant Commander Thomas Hoffman, U.S. Navy. Major Todd Horvath, U.S. Army Reserve. Lieutenant Commander Michael Jennings, U.S. Navy. Major Randall Kizer, U.S. Army National Guard. Major Jesse Kopchinski, U.S. Army National Guard. Lieutenant Commander William Light, U.S. Navy. Major Alex Longo, U.S. Army Reserve. Lieutenant Commander Colin Luby, U.S. Navy, with distinction. Lieutenant, Com Lieutenant Commander Christopher Martin, U.S. Navy.
Lieutenant Commander Luis Martinez, U.S. Navy. Lieutenant Commander Kyle Mason, U.S. Navy. Lieutenant Commander Michael Melser, U.S. Navy. Commander Antonia Miggins, U.S. Navy. Major James Moore, U.S. Army Reserve. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Timothy Motlau, U.S. Navy. Major Jacob Oates, U.S. Army. Lieutenant Commander Ryan Pettifer, U.S. Navy, with highest distinction. Major Joshua Phyllis, U.S. Army National Guard. Major Brian Quinn, U.S. Army, with highest distinction. Commander Catherine Burke Reppert, U.S. Navy, with distinction. Lieutenant Commander Kevin Schrote, U.S. Navy. Lieutenant Commander Craig Searles, U.S. Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Devin Snyder, U.S. Navy. Major Michael Spacek, U.S. Army National Guard with distinction. Lieutenant Commander Nathan Stein, U.S. Navy. Lieutenant Christine Walker, U.S. Navy. Lieutenant Commander Timothy Warburton, U.S. Navy. Lieutenant Commander Eric Wright, U.S. Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Andrew Wyman, U.S. Navy, with distinction.
Ladies and gentlemen, please join us in another round of applause for our graduates, honorees, and their families. Rear Admiral Chatfield will now issue the charge to the graduates. Admiral. Well, I've got a smile on my face and uh, I know that you are smiling behind your masks. What a fantastic day it is. I want to welcome you all again. I want to recognize uh, our CNO Distinguished Fellows, Admiral uh, Guillermo Barrera, Admiral Nirmal Verma, Admiral Larsanis, thank you for all you've done to enrich the lives of our students. I'd also like to recognize our interim provost, Jay Hickey, our deans and chairs, our incredible faculty and staff, all of our graduates, and families and friends. Before I begin, let's just whoop it up one more time for these graduates. Boy, I really loved hearing uh, from Captain Kulikowski. Thank you for your remarks to all of our graduates, to all of those assembled here and watching virtually. Uh, thanks for the message. It really came from the heart and from the experience that you have. And I know that they'll appreciate it as they go on to higher levels of achievement and responsibility in their services within the Department of Defense and uh, continue to do valuable work with our interagency and our international partners. To George Lang, our Chief Executive Officer of the Naval War College Foundation, uh, to you and your staff, to the wonderful and community-minded trustees and members of the foundation, thank you for all of your generous gifts this year. Uh, you've really provided critical funding for our programs. It's enriched and enhanced the initiatives uh, that we have and the quality of life and educational experience of our uh, students here at the college. Uh, to all those who work as faculty and staff, I know that you are cheering every time we see a graduate cross this stage. It reaffirms our purpose and mission here at the college, our efforts. And I wanted to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for giving all that you do for the uh, tremendous experience in education that our graduates walk away with. And now to our dedicated families. I know uh, we've already heard from Captain Kulikowski, uh, but families and loved ones, we rely so much on you, your love, your support, and sort of the patience and endurance that you have for how we are called and what we are called to do. You enable our warfighters to do those incredible things and develop the ability to protect and serve our great nation. We know that the pandemic has affected each of you and your families. It's affected your quality of life. With COVID came very difficult decisions and transitions that you might not have made otherwise. For those who accompanied your student to Newport, we, uh, we really appreciate the move, even on a short timeline, uh, less than a year uh, for this tour. And it adds additional stress to your families uh, to have to settle in and then to have to move again. So thank you for that. And for all of you who supported your student from afar, we know that the, separate, that the separation that you endured added to your stressors this year and that you've missed those personal touches that only come with face-to-face -face interaction and intimacy. Thank you all for supporting your service and your graduate. And to all of our spring 2022, uh, our March graduates, 
You are now graduates of the United States Naval War College. For the last year, you've been part of this college's great mission. We're committed to education, research, and outreach. And now as graduates, it's your responsibility to use your knowledge as you return to the dynamic security environment that you will find yourselves in. And to serve your subordinates well, and to grow and develop as warfighters. You've been provided with a new set of tools here. You're freshly honed. You're able to anticipate and prepare for the future. During your time here at the Naval War College, we've helped you to develop vertically and horizontally as leaders and warfighters. Our goal was to increase your knowledge by exposing you to new ideas, concepts, and perspectives. This would help you develop a greater cognitive capacity and help you ena enable you to succeed in a complex security environment. We've provided you new lenses and models to understand the world around you. And with that new skill set, we are counting on you to help strengthen the foundations of peace and to create a decisive warfighting advantage for the United States, for our maritime partners and our allies. You see, the United States is a maritime nation. Our security and prosperity depend on the seas. As President Biden stated in his March 2021 Interim National Security Guidance, our world is at an inflection point. The United States must renew its enduring advantages so that we can meet today's challenges from a position of strength. As stated in our Tri-Service Maritime Strategy, our service chiefs have committed to working together to build, lead, and advance a rules-based international system through shared commitments with our allies and partners to maintain a naval force that is ready to defend our shores, maintain sea control, and protect our national security and economic interests. You have only to turn on your television today to understand that this, this has never been more important than it is today. <laughs> Graduates, we have loaded you up with academic concepts, theories, case studies, et cetera. But it was your own self-reflection, your own conversation with peers, your own personal growth that supported your vertical development as an ethical leader in the profession of arms. We provided the venues and opportunities for you to build a strong worldwide network of maritime partnerships, united in common purpose and with a relentless drive to anticipate, think creatively, and lead through change. Your careers as service members have been filled so far with unpredictability and momentous change. Yet example after example prove to us that a dynamic reality can be leveraged for good as long as we support each other and keep our energy and our efforts directed toward a higher vision and clearly identified objectives. Our leaders have made clear that continuous learning is a strategic enabler, an enabler to the success of our fighting forces, to the success of our interagency and to the success of our international partners. This year of education is a direct investment into gaining warfighting advantage and advances in the maritime environment. The development of our soldiers, sailors, Marines, airmen, guardians, and Coast Guardmen are our most important consequential endeavor. Every one of our service members brings different and special contributions to our teams. 
cultivating a high performing and innovative workforce built on the foundations of diversity and inclusion starts at the top and it must be carried out by you, our frontline leaders. Set the example of inclusive leadership and hold your standards high for those around you. In order to create high performing organizations, you are going to need to be able to tap into the energy and capabilities of all of your war fighters, valuing and integrating individual perspectives, ideas, and contributions. This type of inclusive leadership will cast new light on existing challenges and future obstacles and enable your units to maximize their potential. My charge to you, as you return to your operational positions throughout the world, is to lean on and utilize the new tools that you worked on here. Analyze how we fight, frame problems, develop and assess solutions, and build winning teams. Although your academic year here in Newport is only a small slice of the continuum of learning that will take place throughout your career, you must continue to invest in personal and professional development for yourself and for those you lead. So find time to continue to access our faculty and the content that we continue to generate here at the Naval War College. We have lots of content and reminders for you available through our YouTube channel and through your connection uh, via hybrid lectures and our conferences. We know that our service le leaders, we know that our service leaders have identified key traits that are sought in joint officers. Collaboration, integration, innovation. So do not be content to sit comfortably in your subject matter expertise. Press out to the edges. Seek opportunities to interact with others whose specialties and knowledge and viewpoints differ from yours. That is where innovative ideas are born. And those ideas just might be the key to our future success. Don't return to the old habits you had. Make a new habit in your work life that reminds you to access the knowledge and experience that you've gained here. New practices of intellectual engagement, wider sources and perspectives to access, improved analytical skills. And lastly, you have spent the year here attaining a higher level of oral and written expression. Take the time to invest in building those skills in the high performing teammates you lead. Your job here is not complete because you are now members of the United States Naval War College alumni. It goes back 137 years. I encourage you to stay connected and engaged with each other and with us. Reach out and find those other Naval War College graduates within the Naval Joint Interagency and International Alumni. Among this group, cultivate lifelong partnerships based on respect for diverse perspectives and enhanced by your mutual beliefs in upholding the principles of democracy, of territorial integrity, of sovereignty, of respect for the international rules-based order, and of working together collaboratively to enhance warfighting effectiveness and interoperability. We will continue to ask for your feedback as you navigate your future assignments. We hope that you will communicate with us and that those pearls that you share with us will inform future changes to our curriculum and continue to enable improvements in our delivery of excellence in education, research, and outreach. I'd like to conclude my remarks by once again addressing our families and friends here today. Thank you so much for being the pillar of strength for your graduate 
and for taking the time to share in the successes today. It's a momentous achievement to all of our March graduates. Congratulations to those Navy types, Bravo Zulu. You've done a really great job here and we wish you the best of luck. Congratulations. Please rise and remain standing for the benediction and the departure of the official party. Let us pray. Eternal Father, Almighty God, may we never forget the high privileges and weighty responsibilities entrusted to us as we serve and lead. Grant to each warrior family represented here your grace, strength, and joy each day. And may each of these graduates go out in joy and be led forth in peace. Grant to them safe journeys to the next place of service. And may each of us honor you, our great creator God, in everything we do each day. For all of these things, we pray confidently in your most holy name. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our graduation ceremony. Thank you for joining us this afternoon.